Hey guys, I'm just here. I'm drinking coffee number two this morning out of Totoro. I'm having one of those Four Sigmatics adaptogenic coffees after my um, after my Javalia, and it's the one with cinnamon in it. It's really good. I am just really enjoying those those little those little adaptogenic coffee blends. They they're really nice. Um, and you know, Totoro enjoys them as well. But anyways, guys, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of this video, um, you know, through the course and duration of my channel, I think no topic has garnered more query and enthusiasm than if I could do a video discussing parabens. So today I'm gonna to talk about parabens, what I think you should know about them, and you know, kind of discuss some of the fears and phobias around parabens in cosmetic products. So parabens refer to a group of compounds derived from 4-hydroxybenzoic acid. They've been in widespread use in cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and foods since dating back to 1923. And many people these days fear parabens because of uh, fear surrounding potential estrogenic effects, anti-androgen effects, phobias around carcinogenic potential, and potential relationship to a breast cancer. And in Europe, some parabens have even been banned. In the United States, however, we have no such legislation regulating parabens or the presence of parabens in our personal care products. And so many consumers um, hear that, many US consumers hear like, oh, well, this is banned in Europe, it must be dangerous. Why is it not banned here? What's wrong? Uh, why is it banned? And it generates a lot of fear and misinformation that is rampant on the internet. <laughs> One of, the, one of the most common fears that is verbalized in the comments of my videos that I hear from patients is the phobia that parabens have potential endocrine disrupting abilities, that they have pro-estrogenic effects, anti-androgenic effects that could potentially be carcinogenic, specifically uh, predisposing to breast cancer, as well as a variety of other cancers. What is, the, what is the evidence behind that? Parabens have been examined in both lab studies on cells in a dish, as well as small animal models, and the literature and evidence for safety of parabens in personal care products is continuously evaluated by the FDA um, on a very, very, very strict basis. Many laboratory studies on cells in a dish and in yeast have shown that actually parabens are in yeast 10,000 fold less potent than 17 beta estradiol, which is, is uh, basically estrogen. And in animal studies, in, in mice and rats, it's actually been shown that parabens are 100,000 fold less potent than 17 beta estradiol or estrogen. So very weak in, in yeast models and in small animal models. But as I've said in my other videos, you are not a laboratory animal. You are not a, you are not yeast. Um, human anatomy, physiology, and metabolism is incredibly different and more complex. We have different ways of, of metabolizing things. And so you should always exercise caution when interpreting or hearing animal studies or laboratory studies as far as their application to human health. Okay, you should always interpret that with a little bit of caution and reservation. Parabens are rapidly metabolized to 4-hydroxybenzoic acid in the human body, and 4-hydroxybenzoic acid has no estrogenic activity, it has not been shown to have any, any, any pro-estrogen effects um, whatsoever. The American Cancer Society, as well as the FDA, has continuously reviewed the literature on parabens in personal care products and has concluded that there is zero evidence that parabens are associated with any sort of cancer or teratogenic, meaning dangerous to developing, developing babies in the pregnant mother, or um, you know, more specifically related to or associated with breast cancer whatsoever. So the phobias around like deodorants containing parabens and causing breast cancer simply is not substantiated whatsoever in, in, human, in actual human studies. 
All right, well then, if parabens are not dangerous, then why are they banned in Europe? What's the history behind that and why exactly is, is that the case? Why are they allowed here? Well, in 1984 in the United States, the Cosmetic Ingredient Review Panel first took a look at parabens, and at that time they concluded more than safe. And as I've said, the FDA and various other regulatory societies in the United States continue to, to scrutinize and evaluate the literature on parabens and the, the available evidence for paraben use in, in personal care products and can, can continue to conclude that there is no data to demonstrate that they are not safe and uh, you know on the on the flip side appear to be more than safe as far as the regulation in Europe and, and where that, that came about and, and, and when it started, sometime around 2005, the Scientific Committee of Consumer, Consumer Safety um, decided that parabens were safe up to 0.4% in personal care products. And the reason for this change and, and for this, this rule coming into place stemmed from some studies at the time in laboratory animals showing that parabens lowered sperm counts in male rats. However, those laboratory studies have not been successfully replicated at all. And again, as I said earlier, you are not a rat, all right? Laboratory animal models do suffer limitations that you have to exercise reservation for generalizing to human health. But then in 2010, the same committee decided that based on the margin of safety, just to be extra, extra cautious, this uh, regulatory committee in Europe decided to lower the amount of allowable parabens in personal care products from 0.4% to 0.19%. And they stated that was simply just to be, just to be on the conservative side of what, was, what is known to be within the margin of safety. However, unfortunately, in 2011, Denmark decided to ban parabens in uh, products for children under the age of three years of age. And then in 2014, Europe in general just decided to ban parabens. And their rationale was basically that there is lack of available safety data in humans. They don't feel as though there is enough safety data in humans. And therefore, they decided to ban them in Europe. They're not banned or regulated in the United States, however, because all of the evidence that we have from longstanding use actually shows that they are more than safe. But Europe would just feel more comfortable with more safety data. Um, you know, it is different countries regulate different things differently. Legislation and regulations that come into place from governmental agencies it differs and it doesn't always necessarily reflect a known truth, all right? So as it stands, you know, in Europe, hydroquinone is banned as well in many countries in Europe, whereas it's allowed here. Uh, in, in Europe, in the United States, you know, we have a, we have a, a, a much older drinking age for which people can um, purchase alcohol uh, than in Europe, all right? Alcohol is a known toxin and, you know, it, it actually is a toxin. So we have more stricter regulations on, on alcohol and the sale of alcohol to minors than in many countries in Europe. So, you know, because, because one, one part of the world decides to regulate things one way versus another, um, really the, the overwhelming body of evidence for something doesn't change. The science there doesn't change. Whether or not governmental agencies choose to, to do things, it's, it's hard to say always why, why they pursue things, but Europe elected to be more on the conservative side and just, just decided to ban them. But in the United States, the American Cancer Society has concluded there is zero evidence to suggest that parabens are associated with or causative of breast cancer. Uh, furthermore, parabens are, you know, they are absorbed in the body through personal care product use. They are absorbed transdermally, and upon absorption, they are actually rapidly metabolized by our liver and excreted by our kidneys into the urine. They do not accumulate to any extent within human body tissues. They cannot be de demonstrated in, in the tissues of, human of the human body. Um, they, are, they are excreted 
And again, this reflects the fact that you are not a rat, you know? Your body, your body is equipped to, to process them and to metabolize them and to deal with them efficiently. Furthermore, one thing that I don't think ever, ever gets mentioned is that parabens are naturally occurring substances in many of the foods that we all consume. They're naturally present in strawberries, in blueberries, in olives, um, yeast, grapes. Parabens are actually wonderful biocides in personal care products. It's necessary to have biocides within personal care products to not only protect the product, like your moisturizers, your sunscreens, your, your makeups, not only to protect the product and any active ingredients in it, but to protect you um, from putting harmful harmful pathogens on your skin that could grow in that could grow in these products. Parabens, short chain parabens, offer good um, antibacterial coverage against most gram positive bacteria, as well as many gram negative bacteria. Um, and then the longer chain parabens actually are anti yeast and anti mold. So when short and long chain parabens are combined in a product, uh, it allows very good broad spectrum antimicrobial antimicrobial coverage that will protect the product and will protect you uh, from from putting putting bacteria on your skin from a contaminated product. All right, I always I always hear all these phobias in the comments about you know products in jars and jars and and all that, but parabens and, and preservatives are present in these products to to prevent that from happening. They are effective biocides and important ingredients in those products. But consumer fears around parabens have changed the way products are marketed to you. You know, it, it puts a lot of pressure on cosmetic companies, personal care product companies to formulate products that are free of parabens. Uh, basically to sell you paraben free products that you feel comfortable using and buying up. And in doing so, what they have to do, they still have to put preservatives in the product, okay? They can't you know, make a product that's then gonna give you a staph infection, right? They still have to put some sort of preservative in, in the product. And the preservatives that, that they're left with choosing actually tend to be more problematic for people with sensitive skin, people with eczema. Um, you know, the, the Paraben-free products oftentimes contain things like formaldehyde releasers, which have a much, much higher incidence of people developing allergies to and sensitivities to, whereas the parabens actually are very, very, very low risk of, of allergic contact dermatitis sensitivity rashes. So people actually tolerate parabens on their skin much better than other preservatives. And in fact, if you are somebody with a history of eczema, um, many dermatologists actually would prefer you to use parabens. It's actually been shown that, that one of the paradoxes of, of the paraben phobia is that parabens are actually the, probably one of the safer preservatives for people with sensitive allergy prone skin like people with eczema. And they should actually be choosing products that contain parabens and not some of the other, other preservatives like formaldehyde releasers, for example. The last point that I will conclude with is, you, you know, you may be asking, well, if parabens, if you're saying that parabens, all the evidence we have suggests that shows that parabens are safe and that they don't accumulate in the body, that they're, you know, not associated with breast cancer, then why do skincare companies, cosmetic companies, as well as dermatologists often recommend patients use products that specifically say on the label paraben free like why are we doing that well here's the deal with that as far as from 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 the angle of the of the companies selling you the product they have a bottom line all right and so they want to sell you something that you feel comfortable buying all right so that's why they put that on there it's not they don't they don't state paraben free or or make paraben free products uh, because they feel good about it inside, they, they make them that way so that you'll buy them because they know that you fear them, all right? And likewise, uh, dermatologists and other healthcare providers 
are open to suggesting paraben-free products to you because we because we know that for people with dry skin, for people with eczema, using a moisturizer is a very, very important part of skincare for people with the, those diseases. Um, it's an important part of skincare for everybody, actually. Um, and the last thing that we want is for your fear to prevent you from, from using a basic skincare product, all right? So that is why, you know, physicians are open to suggesting paraben-free products. That's why, you know, I'm a huge fan of Vanny Cream and all of their products will say paraben-free on there, um, you know, because it's almost like buffering, buffering that phobia a little bit, but it's not, it's not really, it's not really saying the product is safe, is somehow safer because it is paraben free. And that's what's important for you to understand. So the the continuing to, to market and, and to sell and to support paraben free products, it's kind of like, you know, if your child has a fear of the dark, right? An irrational fear of the dark, many children have that. And you as the caregiver um, allow them to go to bed every night with a nightlight on, all right? By allowing them to go to bed with the nightlight on, you're not acknowledging that monsters are going to come in and, and, and attack them in the night, right? I mean, you, you understand that. But you're, you allow them to have that, that nightlight in the bedroom because that makes them feel more comfortable and allows them to get a good night's sleep. So, you know, if you choose to avoid parabens, that's more than fine. There are other preservatives out there that 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 do a good job protecting you from from uh, contamination of the product and protect the product. They do have a higher incidence of allergic contact dermatitis, particularly in people with eczema, but otherwise they are they are fine. Okay, so if you choose to avoid parabens, no biggie, right? Um, but I make these videos and am motivated to make these videos discussing the data behind controversial ingredients because I feel as though, and I note that there is quite a bit of misinformation that just gets, gets promoted and blanket statements I hear over and over again, um, you know, blog posts, lifestyle experts who continually promote the idea that, oh, you know parabens cause cancer, so um, that's why I use I'm using this product that's free of parabens. And I just want you to have at least this information so that you, you can make more informed decisions about the products that you buy and why you buy them. Um, and also, oftentimes they are, are promoted with a motivation to sell products. And I just hope that these videos give you a little bit more information to make decisions for yourself as far as what products you buy and feel comfortable using. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.